What is going on writers? My name is Michael James. I'm a published author and full-time writer and today I'm actually going to be talking to all of you self-help book writers out there or anyone writing in the non-fiction niche genre, whatever you want to call it, and are writing motivational work or writing about things that you are trying to inspire others to do. And we're going to actually use this book as an example, Eat That Frog. Uh, this is an incredible book. If you've never read it, I'll leave a link in the description. It will support me if you use it because it is an affiliate link, but it's no extra charge to you. This is an awesome book. Check it out. Um, yeah, it's about procrastination and how to overcome procrastination. And it is rated as like one of the best motivational books out there. So I highly recommend it. But anyway, we are going to be talking about five different things that this author does in the intro of his book that I think that you need to apply to, whether you're writing blog articles, magazine articles, or a book yourself, you need to have this in the intro, the first few paragraphs of your own writing in order to hook your reader, engage them, build their trust, and have them continue reading. So make sure you grab yourself a cozy writing sweater. Can't be a good writer without a cozy writing sweater. And let's get right into it. So before I get into the five tips I want to share with you, first I am actually just going to read the first nine paragraphs of the preface of this book. And you can find this actually if you go to Amazon and search for this book or click that link in my description and press the look inside button, it will show you the exact same nine paragraphs I'm about to read to you. So I'm not sharing anything you can't find online for free anyway. Also, I will be sharing it on my screen so that you can read along with me. So it begins like this. Thank you for picking up this book. I hope these ideas help you as much as they have helped me and thousands of others. In fact, I hope that this book changes your life forever. There's never enough time to do everything you have to do. You are literally swamped with work and personal responsibilities, projects, stacks of magazines to read, and piles of books you intend to get to one of these days as soon as you get caught up. But the fact is that you are never going to get caught up. You will never get on top of your tasks. You will never get far enough ahead to be able to get to all those books, magazines, and leisure time activities that you dream of. And forget about solving your time management problems by becoming more productive. No matter how many personal productivity techniques you master, there will always be more to do than you can ever accomplish in the time you have available to you, no matter how much it is. You can get control of your time and your life only by changing the way you think, work, and deal with the never-ending river of responsibilities that flows over you each day. You can get control of your tasks and activities only to the degree that you stop doing some things and start spending more time on the few activities that can really make a difference in your life. I have studied time management for more than 30 years. I have immersed myself in the works of Peter Drucker, Alex McKenzie, Alan Lakin, Stephen Covey, and many, many others. I've read hundreds of books and thousands of articles on personal efficiency and effectiveness. This book is the result. Each time I came across a good idea, I tried it out in my own work and personal life. If it worked, I incorporated it into my talks and seminars and taught it to others. Galileo once wrote, you cannot teach a person something he does not already know. You can only bring what he does know to his awareness. Depending upon your level of knowledge and experience, these ideas may sound familiar. This book will bring them to a higher level of awareness. When you learn these methods and techniques and apply them over and over until they become habits, you will alter the course of your life in a very positive way. So tip number one, if you are trying to hook and engage your reader is to give your intentions. You want your reader to know what is this book about? What is this blog article about? What are you talking about? And why are you talking about it? What is the intention here? So we already know from the very first title and subtitle of this book, Eat That Frog. That That's kind of confusing. But the subtitle of this book is 21 great ways to stop procrastinating and get more done in less time. So we already know this book is about what? It's about stop procrastinating. So Brian Tracy already makes it very clear to his readers that this book is going to help them stop procrastinating. But then he gives his intention right from the get-go in the preface here. So whether you're writing a preface or an intro or even just having an introduction paragraph into a blog post or this is chapter one of your book, Whatever it is, you should have intention in the very first paragraph. Let me let me uh, show you where his intentions are. Twice you see the phrase, I hope. He says, I hope what? 
I hope these ideas help you. The second time is, I hope that this book changes your life forever. So basically, Brian Tracy is saying that his intention is to change the life of his reader. In what aspect? In the aspect of his subtitle. Stop procrastinating. That is his intention. So tip number one is to give your reader your intentions. Tell them what they can expect from you. You want them to know what you are trying to get across. What is the reason you are writing this? Why are you writing this to them and why should they read this? That is the point of your first paragraph. And as well as just like Brian Tracy did, he used his subtitle to go even further. So he had less to explain in that first paragraph. He didn't have to say this book is about procrastinating because that was already in a subtitle. The reader already knows that. But now he's telling them what his hope is for them reading this book. And that's exactly what you wanna do in your first paragraph. Tip number two is to have a relatable problem. So you already got your reader with your intent. You tell them what the purpose of you writing this is. You're hoping to change the lives of others, or at least in this book, that's the case. Brian Tracy is saying, I hope to change the lives of others about procrastinating. I want to help them stop procrastinating, right? We got that from the very first paragraph. But then he goes on to talk about the relatable problem that everyone, or at least the majority of his audience has. So... This is exactly what you wanna do in your story. I'll, I'll read some of this for you right here. The next three paragraphs are all about the, rela the relatable problem. There's never enough time to do everything you have to do. That is the first problem he talks about. The fact is, you are never going to get caught up. That's another problem. And then lastly, and forget about solving your time man management problems by becoming more productive. No matter how many personal productivity techniques you master, there will always be more to do. So those are the three problems he says. He says, first, there's never enough time. Second, you're never gonna catch up. And third, it doesn't matter how many techniques you master, there's always going to be more to do. So those are the three problems he says his reader has, and they're all relatable. And the reason you do this when you are writing, especially like self-help, is because you want your reader to consider, yeah, I have the same problem. You want to emotionally hook them, emotionally connect with them. So if you're talking about how to overcome grief, then you wanna talk about, you know, grieving is hard, grieving pulls you down, it really, uh, ruins parts of your life and aspects of your life. It causes relationships to deteriorate and it causes you to lack effort at work and you start procrastinating more and you start getting depressed. You want your reader to read all those things and say, yeah, I have the same problems. I know exactly what this author's talking about. That's exactly what you want to do. You want to hook them emotionally, engage them emotionally, and show them that you know exactly what's going on in their life. If you can relate to their issue, then they'll continue reading. So make sure you list a relatable problem or multiple relatable problems so that your reader can relate emotionally to you and connect with your writing. Tip number three is in the very beginning of your book, you want to follow up these problems that are relatable with solutions and assurance. You want to tell your reader that they can overcome something. Look at this, the next, the next paragraph, the very first two words, you can, you can what? You can get control of your time. That's what he's promising his reader if they write, if they read this book. He goes on in the second sentence of this paragraph, you can get control of your tasks and activities of the day. So he is saying twice now that you can overcome these things. He is saying that I have the solutions and I am assuring you, I am reassuring you that you can do these things, you can overcome. I, he is telling his reader that they don't have to be stuck with these problems, that they can overcome these obstacles in their life if they continue to read. So that's exactly what you wanna do. So first, you're giving them uh, the intention of the, of the book itself and telling them how you want to help them. Secondly, you are telling them that there's a relatable problem and they are connecting emotionally with you. And now they're almost like at a low point because they're thinking about that problem they have and they're like, yeah, like I relate to this so hard. And then you follow that up with, but I have good news. I can help you overcome that struggle. I can help you overcome that problem. So it's just like giving a gospel message. You want to, you want to tell them what you're going to try to do, tell them why you're doing it by telling them what the problem is, and they'll say, yeah, I do have that problem. And then you follow that up with the solution, telling them you can do this and I can share with you the info on how to do it. That is the lineup of your preface or your first few paragraphs in a blog post or whatever it is if you want to hook your reader.
Tip number four is to give your reader proof. You want them to be able to trust you. So now that you've said, this is my intention, this is the problem you have, I have the solution and I can assure you that you're going to be able to overcome this obstacle if you continue reading, they might be asking, how can I trust you? How do I know that you are a credible source to listen to? Because if you don't give any backup on who you are and prove your story, prove who you are to them, then they're not going to listen to you. Why would they listen to some stranger? You have to prove to them that they can trust you. So Brian Tracy does this beautifully in the next two paragraphs. He gives proof through credibility, and then he gives proof through experience. So if you don't have credibility, experience is just as powerful if you share your experience. A lot of times, people that uh, share motivational stories, they can change the lives of others by sharing their story, sharing their testimony of how they overcame some kind of thing in their life. You know, you don't have to study alcohol and drug addiction to be able to go through that experience and say how you overcame it. You don't have to be a psychologist that understands the brain and understands how to overcome those things if you've already gone through it and you have a, sh a story to share. So just because you don't have credibility, maybe you didn't go to college for this, or maybe you haven't studied thousands of papers, you know, you may not be able to share that, but you can share experience. Experience is just as powerful. But if you can share credibility, by all means, share that as well, because it just makes you more credible, obviously. It makes you more trustworthy. So Brian Tracy in the first paragraph starts off by saying, I have studied time management. So he studied it. And he goes on to say, I've studied it for 30 years. He talks about who he studied it under. These are probably, I don't know these names personally. These are probably names of people that his audience might be able to relate to or be like, hey, I've watched one of this guy's lectures or hey, I've heard of these guy's books or hey, I heard this guy speaking on the radio radio once. Whatever it is, they might be credible uh, sources of information on this topic. Beyond that, he talks about how he's read hundreds of books on this topic. He's read thousands of articles on this topic. So he knows his stuff. He's saying, you can trust me. I am a credible source. And then he goes on to say, I have the experience. So check out the next paragraph. He says, each time I came across a good idea, I tried it out. He says that he tried all these things and this book is the result of trial and error of all these things, seeing what were the best results that he had and how many of these tips actually worked from all of the studying he has done. So he is proving that he is a credible source and that he has the experience and that is exactly what you want to do. So if you're going to share your knowledge on overcoming alcoholism or overcoming grief or overcoming fear or how to do something, whatever it is, you have to prove that you are a trustworthy source to listen to. The fifth and final tip is to tell your reader how this is going to change their life. So you already told them what your intention is, and even if your intention is that I hope this changes your life, you wanna go on to explain how that happens. So after you show that you are a trustworthy source, someone that people can trust and listen to and they can believe in, you wanna tell them what the result is if they finish this book. You wanna tell them how this is going to change their life forever to make them say, yeah, I wanna read this. Brian Tracy, again, does a phenomenal job at this. Check out his very last paragraph here. This book will, this book will what? This book will bring them to a higher level of awareness. He goes on to say, you will, you will what? You will alter the course of your life in a very positive way. So he is saying, these are things that you can know without a shadow of doubt are going to happen in your life if you read this book. These are the things that are going to change. And that's exactly what you wanna do with your reader. You want to tell them, what, again, whether this is a blog post, whether this is a book you're writing, whatever it is, tell your reader that they're going to read this because it is going to change their life in some way, shape, or form. It's going to give them a new perspective on something. It's going to teach them how to do something. It's going to show them that they can overcome something. It's going to open their eyes to a new thing. Whatever it is, you have to tell them what they are getting into and excite them with that so that they wanna continue reading. All right, I know I said that there was only five tips, but I do have one bonus tip, and that is to include either a metaphor or a quote. And a metaphor or a quote can be super beneficial. I'll give you an example. When I started one of my blog posts about an outline, I talked about how outlining a book is like building a house with Legos. And I went on to explain why they are similar. And I created this vivid picture that my reader can connect with and be like, wow, it is kind of like that to kind of relate to them 
and to also grab on their emotions a little bit, grab on a past experience. Or maybe the metaphor I use can be something kind of humorous so that it makes them laugh. Whatever it is, it is something that kind of engages your reader just a little bit more. It really helps them connect to you and show that you have a light side to what you're talking about. You have either a humorous side or an interesting side that they are interested in. You connected with their past or you, you connected with something that they can relate to right now in their life, whatever it is. Now, if you can't think of a metaphor, that's okay. You can, if you can make up a metaphor, don't use a metaphor that's overused. Make something up, make something up creative that is something they've never heard so they can kind of be like, oh, that's interesting, never thought of it that way. But if you can't think of a metaphor, that's okay. Use a quote, and Brian Tracy uses a quote in his book, and I'll share it right here. He says, Galileo once wrote, dot, 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 and this quote backs up everything he's just saying. It goes along with what he's saying. So it shows that I'm not the only one that thinks this way. I'm not the only one that talks about these things. And Galileo says, you cannot teach a person something he does not already know. You can only bring what he does know to his awareness. And then Brian Tracy goes on to explain how this quote backs up the purpose of his book and uh, how this book is going to change his reader's life. So make sure that you Apply these five tips to the introduction of your book or your blog post, whether it's in nine paragraphs like it was here, or it's only in a few paragraphs. Maybe you do all of this in three or four paragraphs, whatever the case may be. Try to have all five of these things and maybe keep this bonus in there. Have a little quote, have a little metaphor, whatever it is, spice it up a little bit with something that makes it unique. And I can assure you that your engagement level of your readers is going to skyrocket because they're going to read those first paragraphs and if they are the correct audience for your book or your blog post, they're going to say, wow, I feel like I have to read this now. I feel like I have to see what is coming, what is coming next. I have to finish this. So make sure you use these five tips. I hope they're beneficial to you. And like I said before, if you've never read Eat That Frog, I would highly recommend it. You can find a link in the description if you want to check it out. It is a super awesome book. It's just incredible how, how much you can learn from some of these writers out there. And uh, Brian Tracy is definitely a good writer to learn from. So those are all the tips I have for you, plus that bonus tip. And if you've watched this far, please consider dropping a thumbs up on the video. Also, I just wanted to mention that I just dropped my third class on Skillshare. And if you are interested in checking that out, a link is in the description. Is it all about writing fiction and some of my best tips? Actually, even nonfiction writers could probably benefit from it. It's just about different tips about writing. Um, what I do to prep for writing and what I do when I hit writer's block and all kinds of different stuff So if you want to check that out link is in the description comment down below if you have other books that have a great example of a really solid introduction or maybe a blog post tell me about a blog post that has a really solid introduction that uses these five tips that gives the intent of the blog post and then follows that up with relatability and then follows that up with assurance and solutions and then follows that up with proof of who they are and then lastly follows that up with how this will change the reader's life if you see that in other blog posts or books you've read i would love to hear about them in the comments below and if you like the content feel free to subscribe it is free and it does help me out so thanks a lot and i will see you guys in the next video